Hi everyone, Long Finney Finney one, one Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Eve Tumor project, Praise a Lord Who Chews But Which Does Not Consume, or simply Hot Between Worlds. This is the newest full-length album from Eve Tumor, a music project spearheaded by multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, and producer Sean Bowie. Their third full-length project since getting picked up by Warp Records in the late 2010s. And since then, Bowie's been building a pretty consistent body of work that's been shrouded in dark, mysterious, and sometimes nostalgic aesthetics. They're truly one of a few modern artists whose work I would seriously consider to be otherworldly. Despite a clear appreciation for genres that are really tried and true, such as art rock and neo-psych, Bowie also very much favors the rawness of punk as well as the theatrics of glam rock. Now, thus far as I've been reviewing Eve Tumor records, I've been way more drawn to the singles than I have the deep cuts, and I was kind of hoping that would change with this new LP, especially since it seems like there's more of a thematic focus this time around, because there are multiple moments on this project that struggle with themes of spirituality, God, heaven, existentialism. And while Bowie has been no stranger to theological ideas in the past, just look at the title of their last album as well as the opening track to it, Praise the Lord still leans into these vibes harder uh, than any of Bowie's recent work, while also making a desperate attempt to create a connection or complete a theory around love and intimacy. Let's start with the opener, God is a Circle, which is a very odd and introspective tone setter, which I think gives us a pretty potent taste of the album's attitude and sonics. We have thumping drums, driving bass lines, sporadic and noisy guitars, which are orbited by these twisted vocal samples, not just shrieks that you hear toward the end of the song, but these loops of heavy gasping that play, I believe, throughout the whole track, which is kind of ironic because the mix on the instrumentation here is suffocating. Lyrically here, we see the start of the portrait Bowie is painting, uh, through fresh and kind of newborn eyes, with mentions of an unclean world being introduced, an unexplored or underexplored mind, where also being introduced to the idea of a god who can see everything, also being made aware of things like etiquette, tradition, manners, and there's a mantra toward the end of the track uh, that Bowie sings about things kind of going in a circle, things being a same old dance of sorts. There's also an interesting line in the middle of the track that stands out about uh, feeling a certain type of way about everyone you love, discovering that they love someone else. Now, is this someone else God? In a way, uh, the way this line is framed, it feels like a betrayal. And it could make sense in that godly or religious context, given what is said to be Bowie's very conservative surroundings when they were younger. The track Heaven Surrounds Us Like a Hood also contains a lot of nods toward youth and existentialism and family. But my favorite thing about the song has to be its musical progression, with a lot of eerie falsetto vocal patterns passages over building rock instrumentation that eventually reaches this very proggy peak with a lot of heavy drum fills. There's a little vocal snippet interlude about God being in the sky that's kind of chilling. And then from here, we're hit with this cinematic presentation of wailing guitars, loads of effects and layers. It's one of the most immense rushes on the entire record. We hear about God once again on the single Echolalia, but this time uh, that word seems to represent more of an object of lust and desire. It's also made clear the attraction being sung about in this instance may in fact not be love, it's more of a uh, temptation, more of a void being filled, which is an interesting angle that is spelled out very explicitly by a spoken word snippet in the middle of the song. Ultimately what holds this track back is the tune isn't really all that standout. We have a hypnotic groove, a murky mix on the cut, but not really much else. This one's really more like an interlude that overstays its welcome. There are other tracks on this thing that seem more content to explore connections that are more romantic than spiritual, like Lovely Sewer, which is a sparkling atmospheric anthem with some dramatic 80s synth pop vibes coming off of it, and in my opinion, snappier than any of the singles here. The song is about a connection, maybe a friendship, that is going through some chaotic lows, but simultaneously the volatility of it seems to be the attraction, with standout lines like, can't start a war just for the feeling, which acknowledges that, yeah, that's bad, but also that there's like a desire to do that in the first place. And this idea of war in the midst of a volatile connection also comes up in the song In Spite of War, where Bowie sings about being blind to warnings they heard in regards to whoever they have in mind on this song. Everyone told me you're a creep. 
I was blind to see it. The connection, the attraction continues onto the track Meteora Blues, where I will give Bowie one thing. They create so much magic with just an acoustic guitar, vocals, some effects, bass, a beat, because the intro and the first verse on this track are just so immersive, so chilling. That being said, though, this is possibly the most lovesick song on the entire record, with some painfully basic lyrics and a chorus melody that's really nothing to write home about. And once that heavy riff drops on the track, oddly enough, I feel like I'm listening to one of the moodier cuts from Marilyn Manson's Mechanical Animals. But really my biggest issue with the song is that it feels like there was something there in terms of an idea, but it wasn't really explored all that thoroughly, which became more and more apparent as I went in for repeat listens. I also had a similarly sad realization with the track parody, which brings up the idea of authenticity and morality within the realm of pop stardom. And yeah, the track does bring that up, and asks quite a few questions in regards to that too, but doesn't really offer many uh, concrete thoughts or answers, even with Bowie's own personal familiarity with this world. The song Operator is also a piece that's looking for a response of some sort, as Bowie shouts passionately on this track for an operator, uh, looking to be educated, looking to be helped. There's also a sense of Bowie looking for guidance through this very volatile love connection they've been singing about. But once again, despite all the fiery vocals and blaring instrumentation, it's just not really much of a song. Uh, the mix and the performance a lot of the time is grating, and it eventually turns downright annoying by the time we're hit with this uh, B, aggressive, B, B, aggressive uh, cheer routine. From here, the final moments on the record I found to be kind of choppy. Fear Evil Like Fire is one of my favorite moments on the project. It's a really slick and snappy piece of post-punk, one of the strongest hooks on the entire LP, too. And thematically, this track sees the record at a moment of relative peace, finding harmony and a will to compromise, and sort of growing tired of a lot of the anger and volatility that has painted a lot of songs so far. Now, the following Purified by the Fire I found to be a total mess. It's like I'm hearing a lo-fi rap producer uh, use soul chops for the first time, and uh, while the, the source material sounds good, they can't quite construct a coherent groove out of it uh, with no gaps. But then from there, I guess we have an epic closer, which in my opinion comes out swinging with some big rhythms, some string section-esque synth lines, spacey production, proggy rock builds, and angelic a group chorus section toward the end of the track, too. It's got a great song structure. There's a grand feeling of finality to the track that I think closes out the album nicely. And it's also on this track that these themes of heaven and love and romantic harmony overlap. The Venn diagram we've been seeing bits and pieces of so far in terms of God and spirituality and love and romance uh, becomes more of a circle. Bowie says point blank on the track. There was no other way of explaining the feelings they were experiencing without digging into this spiritual imagery. So while the concept of this record, in my opinion, does tie up pretty nicely, I still thought the track list was pretty inconsistent in terms of uh, some songs here and there, uh, just having very half-baked, repetitive, underwritten lyrics, song structures that fall flat, tunes that aren't really memorable or aren't really present. So even with a cohesive idea guiding uh, the central themes of these songs, uh, this Eve Tumor record uh, was still... Ugh, all over the place. In fact, I would say the two records previous to this one had stronger crops of songs. I'm feeling a strong six on this one. Tran, Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that upper link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Eve Toomer, uh, forever.